Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Codename Iceman. Last time, we finally got out of the sub, we planted that bomb at the oil rig, which we don't actually get to see or hear any kind of explosion, or even get any indication that an explosion happened, but it did. And we went through some very complicated steps to get the points needed to get as many points as we can get. And now we are here. I should probably not be just standing around without it being paused. And yeah, it doesn't make sense because to get max points you need to f get the device that turns off the electromagnetic thing and then not use it. Just It just doesn't make sense. Anyway. So I'm guessing this is the guy who lowered the net here. So if we say Iceman, he might have something for us. Use the Arabic language, you mentioned the code name Iceman. Thou speaking, the fisherman acknowledges you by shaking his head yes. Wouldn't that be a nod? He then hands you a fish. Um, thanks. The fish appears to be a local variety. A piece of fishing line is hanging from its mouth. Hmm. After removing the line and hook, you notice something attached to the line just above the hook. Think to yourself, what is this? The weight? Let's look at that. Take a closer look, you see that it's not a weight, but rather a small capsule. So let's open that. You open the capsule and pull out a small map. Ooh. The directions to your disguise. Okay. So, uh, let's see if we can't follow that map and get ourselves disguised because we're kind of conspicuous right now. So it should be in that room there on the left. We want to get in there relatively quickly because this guy comes along. Look around this dilapidated structure. The only thing you can see is an old wooden crate in the corner. Okay. In crate. Oh, open. Nice, okay. Reach in the crate, pick up the clothes, and change into them. You want to drop the fish on the map so they don't give you away. And make sure you wait till that guy's off screen before you head out. And now we're like a just a uh, we're just a humble fisherman. That's all. Now if we can get there, we go. Something about this screen reminds me of Conquests of Camelot. I swear there's a screen just like this in that game. So like we're not really there's no really guidance to get here but we want to go here and we see this woman here let's uh, see if she knows anything let's say Iceman to her blow the code name Iceman she surprises you by responding in English hello John she greets you a long way from Tahiti yeah we know who this is Stacy says I'm happy to see the mission is success so far John I wish you luck in the remainder of it oh. Oh, of course it's something special. Maybe escape from the Tunisian Zoo. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I don't know if flamingos are native to that area. I don't know. Anyway, she actually... Let's see. Does it have time for small talk? So, she actually has a map for us. That I think that was um, briefed to us earlier. Lizzie hands a map to you and the key to her apartment. Oh. I guess uh, she's ready for round two of Nintendo. She also gives you a phony ID. She then says, find your way to the apartment and I'll meet you there later. I'm going to make contact with the USS Saratoga and let them know we're on schedule, she continues. Another thing she adds, there are things in the apartment for you. You can find them in the kitchen. All right, we'll make note of that. So let's look at the map. The directions to Stacy's apartment. Okay. That should be easy enough. 
Now let's drop the map. To keep your cover intact, you hand the map back to the agent. Just in case. Let's make our way to the apartment. So we're in the map, we need to go this way, it's in the north. And one screen over here, we should be there. And there it is. It's a one-room apartment, a small kitchen. A window overlooks the street behind the apartment. All right, I'm just going to save real quick, because with this game, you never know. All right, let's get some sleep. It's relaxing time. You really don't have time for slumber. Come on. Nope, we can't. Okay. So uh, let's look at these things over here in the kitchen. Three canisters labeled sugar, flour, and coffee. So they're actually different sizes. So what you want to do? Pick up small canister. Um. Your canister. Take small. I, I swear I did a test run of this and this was working fine. Okay, it's take, not pick up. Let's open it up. Okay, let's search. I'm gonna see search through the coffee but find nothing. Okay. Let's take the medium one. With a medium sized canister from the counter. Open the canister. Flour. Let's search it. Make a messy search through the flour but find nothing. Okay. Let's take the large canister. Left the large canister from the counter. You immediately notice that it seems to be bottom heavy. Ooh, all right. See, so it contains sugar. Search the canister. You're making messy search for sugar and canister seems to have a false bottom. All right. Let's empty it. Pour out the sugar and see the canister seems to have a false bottom. The bottom. Now open. Remove the false bottom to reveal foam rubber underneath. Okay, get the rubber. Remove the foam rubber and bingo. Conceal at the bottom of the caster between two pieces of foam. Rubber is the weapon. Alright. Let's look at our weapon. Let's use tranquilizer darts. Yeah, we're not doing anything deadly there. So what else is around here? There's also a fridge and something here. A handy roll of duct tape. That's yeah, easy to miss. Open fridge. Well, let's say icebox, I think is the name they use here. Let's see what they have. In ice box. Oh my gosh. In the ice box, you see various perishable food items that don't hold your interest. You'll see a ketchup bottle, some milk, a butter dish, and a block of cheese. Not very well stocked, you think? Yeah, you think they'd stock it a bit better for us? We're gonna be doing a mission. So let's uh, eat, keep up our strength. Loving cheese as much as you do, you eat the entire block. Cheese is pretty good. Drink the milk, with the remaining milk. Can we eat the ketchup? Come on, you can't be that hungry. Okay. Um, let's get the butter container. Get the butter dish. You move the lid and inside you discover a plastic bag that appears to contain a folded pieces of a piece of paper. 
Get the plastic bag and remove the folded piece of paper. At the same time, you return the butter dish to the icebox. So let's read that note. To stay in the note thoroughly, you conclude that a catering business by the name of Baghdad's Fast Foods makes twice a twice daily delivery to the compound. You further note that both deliveries are at the same time each day. Stacy's log file also reveals that one of the two guards will search the caterer prior to entry. The guard then always accompanies the caterer inside. Okay. So let's look window. No overlooks the street behind the apartment. Let's look out the window. And that's where we need to go. They so see it pulls up, they search him, and he goes inside. So we need to take that guy's place. Um, something else that's pretty easy to miss in here is this little green thing here. Business card for Baghdad's fast food catering service. Okay, let's get this card. You remove the business card from the wall. Okay. So if we look at the card, business card for Baghdad's fast food catering service, another phone number has been written on it. So we need to call both those numbers. First, let's call the number that's been written on the bottom there. Um, I'm not sure, like, I, I know it's like it's pretty obvious that you need to call both numbers, but I'm not sure how you're supposed to figure out why you're calling that bottom number. But it'll become obvious in a second. Okay, so it's 03-120-1204. Voice on the other end says, This is Basil, speak your business. Let's talk, man. Explain to the man on the other end that the new caterer will be making the delivery to the compound. Click. So we actually called the compound and uh, let them know that the caterer guy would be a different guy. That's important because they're not going to recognize us and they're going to be super suspicious. So if we call and let them know, they're like, they'll be expecting it. Next, we want to call Baghdad's itself because we need to... Um, get that guy's van and his uniform. That's one, three, five, eight, zero, nine, seven. After a couple of rings, a voice on the other end says, Baghdad's fast food catering service, how can I help you? And I assume that's in Arabic. Talk man. Place an order and leave your phony name along with the address of the apartment. The caterer thanks you for the order and hangs the phone up. Alright. So now we wait. Strangely you're waiting the caterer, you hear footsteps outside the apartment door. You then hear a loud knock at the door. Okay. Let's open the door. You open the door and let the caterer inside. Here's your order, he says, hot and ready to eat. I wonder what kind of food they have in Tunisia. After putting the food on the counter, the caterer says, that'll be $15, please, or whatever the Tunisian equivalent is. But uh, we're not going to pay him. Instead, we're going to use a gun. Freeze, you command. Nearly the caterer puts his hands over his head and says, please show him, I only have $50. Let's take his clothes. This is not a robbery, you say. What I need is your caterer's uniform. I must ask you to remove the uniform, you continue. They say you continues. <laughs> what now, he asks. So let's use the tape on him. It's clearly by the hands and the feet of the caterer. You then tape his mouth shut to prevent his yelling for help. All right. But he's enjoying the show. You don't the caterer's clothes as a disguise. Okay. Then we wait a bit longer. Our poor guy, he's just doing his job. Maybe we should save again. Alright, just then, Stacy enters the room and says, Did you find the weapon and my notes? 
Yes, ma'am. We must work faster, Jose Agent. I just received word the ambassador is going to be moved. Yeah, if you take too long for this, then it'll be too late and you just kind of get a game over. I have to leave now, she says. I must contact my superior and arrange for the helicopter. She advises you to take the caterer's van and begin the rescue. Just before we're walking out, she says, don't forget to conceal the weapon. Very important. Remember, they searched the guy, but they didn't search inside the food plate. Okay, let's hide weapon. You hide the weapon in the food. Yeah, nice and clever. Get food. Get the food, the hidden weapon, and door. Open the door of the van and step out. The guard speaks to you and says your name. Shlinka Abdul, you reply. You must have very good Arabic. Okay, Abdul, he says bring the food inside. And he must have dark skin too, because I can't imagine he looks Arabic. Entering entering the room, the second guard stands near the seated ambassador. You start to perspire as you think to yourself, I'm going to have to move fast for sure. You sure do. Okay. Put food down. Carefully place the food on the table. Open the lid. I get gun. Luckily this part is pretty easy. You grab the gun and point at the nearest guard. Mr. Voice Guard says, just give the men his food and get on with your business. Alright, so shoot and shoot, like really quickly. You fire your second tranquilizer star at the remaining guard. The fantastic drug takes effect as he clutches his chest and slumps to the floor. It doesn't last long though, so you don't want to take too long here, otherwise he'll wake up and shoot you. Let's untie man. Sometimes the pathfinding stuff on this isn't very good. Come the ambassador as you explain to him your identity. Man, you don't know how happy I am to see you. Oh, I almost forgot to do something here. Hopefully it's still not too late. Look, guard. I'm unconscious, he looks pretty tough. Haha. You notice he's wearing a, a ring with a KBGB symbol on it. So you think our friends are the Russian? The Russians are in on this. Well, of course they were. I thought that was kind of obvious. Because <laughs> they want the uh, oil in Tunisia. Okay. So what we're doing to is I was beginning to think this day would never come. Truly, says you're a real American hero. Let's change clothes. Because uh, he needs a disguise too. Let's leave. It doesn't let you move for some reason. You have to actually type leave. We better get out of here quickly, you urge the ambassador. Halt, the guard screams. Uh oh. I shall now kill you both, the guard shouts. I love how he just announces that. But Stacy saves the day. The angel reacts just in time, saving the lives of both you and the ambassador. Stacy, you shout, what did I ever do without you? Probably pretty well, how do you guess? We're almost done, folks. You wouldn't want to save immediately once you get to the next screen. So we want to save now. And uh, before I do, I'm going to tell you how this is going to go. This is kind of a hard thing, but um, there is a pattern to it. You see, we're going to be in a van and we need to make it to the helicopter. We need to be escaping another car that's chasing after us with a gun. We need to be able to make these turns, but not be going too quickly. You need to make the turns at 20 miles an hour at the very most. But you also need to be going fast enough to escape that car. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to explain it and then I'll just kind of do it for you, is on these first two paths, I'm going to go to 30. As soon as I'm rearing 20, I'm going the as soon as I'm going to the corner, I'm going to go down to 20 and hold down left. And that should get me turning left without crashing. Then I'm going to go to 30 real quick again, then go back to 20 when I get in the corner, and go right. Then I'm going to just go 25, then 20, then left, then stay at 20 for the rest. Go right, left, right, and then we should be good. So remember, hit the, cor the corners at 20, 
we'll go 30 for the first two laps of it and then 25 for the third lap and then just 20 for the rest of it there's still a chance that you're gonna have to do this many many times before you get it right I know I did but uh, we'll see how this goes turn left 30 20 5 20 turn left Turn right, turn left. Holy crap, did I? Oh, ow, no! I was gonna get that right the very first try. I was turning right, I swear I was. Oh, I was going too fast? All right, let's try that again. so hard. To start with the three of you hurriedly exit the van and climb into the helicopter. Ooh, he says he dropped your breath. That was a close one. After narrowly escaping the terrorists, you find yourself safely en route to the USS Saratoga. I don't know how I got it. Like, almost got it that first time, but that took me like 20, 30 more tries. <laughs> oh. The part is super hard, but that is that. See the little terrorist jumping on his car all angry. After landing aboard the aircraft carrier USS Saratoga, you attend a mandatory debriefing with the captain and his staff where you learn the following. Commander Weston says the captain, the United States intelligence confirmed that the terrorist group guilty of the abduction of Ambassador Lloyd was in fact infiltrated by the Russian KGB. Oh, further he continues the KGB instigated the abduction knowing the incident with strained relations between the United States and Tunisia. The underlying motive being, he emphasizes, that Tunisia would finally set relations with the United States and halt the oil trade. Captain continues, had the incident been successful, the effect would have let the USSR manipulate the bulk of the world's highest grade crude oil. We did not want that. This is my friend would have this my friend would have had definite negative impact on the economy of the United States. This is my friend that's that typo there. The voice of praise says, The success of your mission, Commander Westland, has turned the tables of the KGB effort, and more important, will expose the world their devious methods. In closing, the captain says to you, Commander, words cannot express the appreciation we feel for the success of your mission. The United States Navy is very proud of you. And now, Commander Westland, above us on the flight deck of the Saratoga, a special award ceremony awaits you. Presentation is about to begin as you listen to the band play Anchors Away. Uh, your heart rate increases as surrounding excitement pumps adrenaline into your blood. You hear someone shout the military command. Attention! With military disciplines, you come to attention with the rest of the ranks. You return the salute of the Rear Admiral, and then he speaks. Commander John Wesling, because of your courageous effort, the mission has been a complete success. The skills you so expertly demonstrated when taking emergency command of the USS Blackhawk have earned you the coveted Gold Dolphins. Is that a real thing? I'm assuming it is. Further, the Rear Admiral says, with great pride and honor, it is a pleasure to present you the Naval Distinguished Service Medal. Nice. The Rear Admiral salutes. You proudly return the Rear Admiral's sharp military salute. In closing, the Rear Admiral says, Washington has ordered a field generated promotion to the rank of Captain. Congratulations, Captain Westland. Nice. True love for sure as our hero tenderly kisses Stacy. Man, they move quick. Alright, and that was Codename Iceman, a game that's very infamous among uh, adventure gamers such as myself, especially those who love Sierra. So if you notice in the top left, I have 299 out of 300 points. That is, of course, because of the bug where when you put the washer 
on the uh, diver, it doesn't give you the point. But I did get full points. I did every single thing to get every single point in the game. So I got full. I'm, I'm just saying that right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, this game, does it deserve its reputation? It kind of does, but that doesn't mean it's all bad. Um, I could tell they put a lot of work into this. Like, there's a beautiful looking game. I love the graphics of it so much. Um, it's one of those games where if you, like, you really need to read the manual, like, more than any other game I've ever played before. You read that manual front to back, have, be as familiar with it as possible, that can get you through, like, 75% of the things that get stuck for other people. That being said, there's that other 25% that is just kind of ridiculous. Um, like, the whole cave sequence for one, that one's kind of iffy. Um, like that freaking dice game. I mean, technically you don't even have to play the dice game to beat the game. Um, it just does make things easier if you decide to use the device you can get from it. Submarine battles were just horrible because the RNG for whether or not you hit them is just atrocious. That whole thing where you have to follow the, uh, uh Kuntz ship, that part was extremely difficult even if you know exactly what you're doing. That's the thing, there's so many parts where you like you know exactly what you're doing and it's still difficult. And that last van arcade sequence. It was so weird because it was like sometimes I'd be doing alright but then like mess up at the end and sometimes I would just get like through one turn and those guys would catch up with me as if suddenly they're at the time they're going a lot faster than they were the last time I restored. I don't know, it's hard to explain, but this game they were actually planning on making a sequel called codename Phoenix. But then the, when the sales and reviews came back for this game, they cancelled it. I really wish they had made that sequel, to be honest. As annoying as this game was, I feel like they could have done so much to make so many improvements and make an even better game. I feel like this game had such great potential and it has such great parts. Um, it just... it got too complicated. Like, yeah, it's supposed to be a spy mission, and it's supposed to be complicated because you're supposed to be following protocols, you're supposed to be knowing military stuff, but, like, another thing, like, knowing the code offset, like, even if you discover, like, you get that earring, you get the film inside, you get back to the suitcase, like, after remembering to ask for the combination, and make sure you use your ID, making sure you checked your ID to make sure you have the right one, and using the film on the suitcase to see what the code offsets are, like, what are the chances you would even know what that means? Like, it's just, because I remember that, like, gave me the toughest time knowing how to put in the CIA code, because I kept trying to do it, and it wouldn't, wasn't working. I'd be like, why? Like, this code doesn't make sense, and I had to finally look up, like, how to do the CIA code, and how, like, the offset thing actually worked. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Um, this has been a good game to play. It was one I've been wanting to do on my channel for a very, very long time, but put off for a while for obvious reasons. But it is done, and uh, I'm just about finished with my uh, test run of my next Let's Play, though that will be a while yet since I need to take a bit of a break here. But yeah, so let me know what you think, if you've played it before, or what you thought of my Let's Play, if you'd be willing to play it yourself. It is available on GOG, and uh, for people who love Sierra, it's worth a go. Anyway. That'll be it. Thanks for watching and have a good day.